Here with Thomas Goins, head coach of Concordia Women's Soccer, to preview the upcoming 2020 season. And, and by now, as we record this, you've had a little bit of time to, to see everybody together. Uh, uh, there might be a, a few that are still waiting to get back, but uh, you've had a, a chance to have some practice anyway. I'm sure that it hasn't been an easy way to, to get into your first season at a new program. But, but, but what have you been able to learn about your team maybe in these kind of strange weeks and, and months away from each other? Uh, it has been a challenge, uh, to, be, to be sure. It's been a challenge. Um, you know, taking on a new program anytime is tough because you got to go through the process of learning your team, getting into the recruit databases, and all those other fun things that come with kind of making a program your own. Uh, and obviously COVID has made that a unique experience for us all. I've been very happy with the, the girls' resiliency through all of this. Uh, they've, they've taken everything in stride, um, uh, you know, especially, you know, having to change a coach, you know, effectively three coaches in a calendar year and dealing with COVID. Uh, they've been absolutely awesome uh, in responding to it. And we've tried to, you know, build through as much communication, as many platforms as we can in the off season. Uh, and going into the preseason, the energy has been just really, really good. Uh, and it's been a positive environment for everybody, so I've been very happy with that. Uh, I, I, I know you, you talked about uh, seeing a lot of, of talent on this roster, maybe even a little bit back in, in February and March when there was, were, was some team activities, but uh, how pleased have you been with uh, the things that you've seen in the few days of practice you've gotten to this point? Uh, the, the talent overall, um, technically, and especially kind of just ball movement and some things that you know usually take a little bit of time to, to develop uh, is a lot further along than you know a, a program I've taken over ever before. So I'm very happy with you know just some of the natural things they've done. Obviously, they've been developed uh, through the years with our upperclassmen. They, they have a good connection. And that's very good. We have you know, a handful of special players that I think are, can make this, this season very good for us. Um, so that that's made me very happy. I think uh, the, the biggest part is just coming together and organizing tactically and getting the mentality we want on the field. And that's what we've been really focusing on uh, in these first few days together is uh, getting the, our defensive and mentality and organization uh, together because that, that will complement and all the natural talent that the girls bring with them will flow once we kind of figure out how we want to be as an organization. How much of a challenge has it been just to organize this preseason to try to maximize it as much as possible when you don't have your typical kind of stretch before class of, of having a lot of practice in a short time frame it has it has been I guess unique is the only word I can give it um, you know you're used to having that time of two days a little bit more freedom to work with in a, in a preseason setting and we just haven't had that this year so again, uh, we've talked to the girls over and over about controlling their controllables. Like, if we have the schedule, this is what we have, and we have to be able to adapt when we're called upon. And we've done that. And the girls, again, uh, they've, they've been very resilient. They've, they've managed this uh, as best as anyone can. And having players, you know, having to deal with COVID stuff from where they came from, international athletes, and all the fun stuff that we, we deal with and, and that has not been dealt with before, um, ultimately, um, you know, I'm proud of how they've responded, but it certainly required us to be a bit more nimble and a bit more uh, light on our feet and creative with how we manage this time together, and they've done very well. Some of the upperclassmen uh, have played a, a, a ton of, of minutes uh, in this program, like uh, Lindsey Carley and Michaela Tweedo, uh, Tori Sarah. How, how do you lean on, on them a little bit, too, as a, a coach in a new program? I think you really have to use them as a sounding board in a lot of ways um, for, you know, one, how the programs want run before me, what has been successful, what are those things they want to keep moving towards that has proven to be successful, and what are some changes they'd like to see and, you know, and adapt to. And you use those as players who've been through the grind, as it is, uh, to help you, you know, develop where the program meets my expectations versus what's been here before. Um, but, you know, it, it's also, they're, they're the teachers for some of these young players. Uh, you know, as we're getting through some of the mentality and some of the things we're doing, uh, especially on the defensive side of the ball, uh, having those players who've been through the grinds playing against the top talent in the, in the conference and the region, uh, those girls can kind of speak to what it does take to have success, the effort it takes to win 
at a conference level and, and at region level. So you really lean on those girls to really impart um, the attitude and uh, energy that it takes to be successful. About from, from what you know of the program and maybe saw the last year or two in your studying of, of the, the team, uh, how much different do you think they might look this fall or is that something you're still figuring out at this point in, in preseason? I, I think there's some of it, I, I think they're going to be strong. I think they'll be a relevant team in conference and even in the region um, as far as the overall talent they have and mentality and those things have been positive for us. It's hard for me to, you know, gauge where they're going to fall within a, a conference that I, I haven't been able to witness myself and because the college game does change uh, so drastically from year to year, you know, with the loss of seniors or uh, especially in, in this world we're in with maybe athletes not being able to return to their campus or whatever the limitations may be. Uh, I think kind of all bets are off a bit in the upcoming season as far as what has happened traditionally in the past. Um, but uh, I think the girls will be competitive and have a chance to have a pretty special year. Uh, how, how would you describe, I guess, your style of, of coaching and, and what ideally you want it to look like <laughs> when, when things are going well out there? Uh, fast. <laughs> we, we want to be fast. Um, now, obviously, physical speed is nice, but uh, we want a tempo to stay high uh, when we can make it that way uh, and keep teams out of their comfort zone. Uh, we, want, we want teams to maybe play a little bit out of their speed, where a little bit above what they're used to, um, so we can, we can play within our comfort zone. And that certainly takes some time to develop, um, and that mentality takes a little bit of time. Uh, but once you get there, um, pushing teams outside of where they want to be and this, the pace they want to play at usually creates an opportunity or two for us that in the run of play maybe it would be harder to develop otherwise. You do have fewer, I guess, regular season games than, than would be normal. Does that change anything really preparation-wise? Or, or not? Uh, yes, in the case of it's uh, the learning curve has to be steeper. Um, you know, when you have five or six non-conference matchups to kind of test the waters and shape and tactics and see, okay, this is what we want to do versus this is what we can do. Um, you know, we've got a, a scrimmage and a non-conference game before we get into the heart of our season. And, you know, those are must-win games. Every, con every conference game is important uh, to the season. Uh, so, you know, the learning curve is a bit more steep um, and, you know, I think that probably affects the younger players more so than some of those kids who've been around. Um, but, you know, the younger players have taken a stride and we've, we've said to them, it's just at the end of the day, they don't have time to be a freshman. They got to come in and play and they got to soak in information and, and be willing to accept that. And every one of them has stepped up. What, what are the main things you will be looking for in that, that opening scrimmage uh, as you hopefully are, are ready to go then a few days later and for real? <laughs> Progress. Uh, we want to be able to say, and again, it's those first couple games, as much as you want to win them, um, obviously scrimmage isn't played for any kind of result, but uh, it's the learning process. And then, uh, you know, we have that for opening match against Bellevue, I believe. and. Uh, it's really the progress of you know really throwing players in different positions and shapes and seeing what is going to be effective for us uh, and seeing players step up in a real environment where you're competing against other college teams. Uh, you can only train so much against yourself uh, and see a certain amount of success uh, and you you can get a false sense of security or a, a false sense of you know uh, I guess lack of confidence depending on where you are in that spectrum. Uh, when you see how it works against other programs, that's where you start developing your personality and seeing who you are. So we really want to take things in, in, in stride. We want to have progress from quarter to quarter, half to half, depending on uh, you know how we break uh, our, our different scrimmages and places down. We want to improve in every, every chance, we, chance we get on the field. So we're playing our best soccer when it matters at the end of the year and in the tournament when we want to you know, earn our spots. So it's really a, a progression. How, how can we improve this time? In terms of your background, I want to make sure I get this right. You, you graduated from Concordia, Wisconsin, and you have a, a master's from Concordia, Irvine, right? Mm -hmm. and you coached at Concordia, Chicago. Now you're at Concordia, Nebraska. What, what makes being part of that Concordia system, I guess, special? No. Uh, for you. <laughs> Man, and you missed I went to Concordia Lutheran High School. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. 
you know, I always say if there could be a byproduct of the Lutheran system, I'm, I'm probably one of them. Uh, but it's just been a place that I've been home. Uh, you know, it's, it's felt right for me. It's, it's part of my faith. Um, it's, it's a place where you get to be free to express that, um, your faith in, in Jesus Christ, but also uh, be a part of something special. Um, and it's every Concordia I've been to has been uh, a, form, a formative place for me. Um, and uh, I think here where you get to feel like you're home, but also enjoy your passion and make your job, you know, a passion and, and a place that you feel like is home. You can't really get a better place to work. And lastly, I know you said it's it's kind of hard to know where you stand within the conference right now, especially uh, when it's all new for you right now. Is Does that mean you kind of approach without much expectation going in? How do you talk about that with, with your team? Maybe it's more about just getting better as a team each day and each time out. I mean, I always keep the expectation high. I, I want them to, I mean, we always, and my, my catchphrase is excellent, excellence is the expectation. Um, you know, every time they step on the field, they're going to win. Um, you know, you know, obviously the scoreboard may be a thing, but you know, we're going to win every time we step on the field, and that's what we're going to play to do. So we we really want to take the season like there's 13 championships. Uh, you know, we want to win all those championships. Uh, so every match we want to play out there and put the energy and the effort in it requires to win and be the champion that day. Um, and if the Lord doesn't give us a victory that day. We figure out how we can win the next one. Um, but uh, the expectation is excellence, no matter what they do. So, um, you know, I, I don't have a low bar for them. I expect them to meet a high bar. Uh, and if we don't meet it one day, we're going to meet it the next day.